I've just finished the first movement of the Great War Symphony. I've got to do the orchestration, but the overall structure is there. It starts, believe it or not, with the sound of Big Ben, which is tuned to an E. And so that has dictated the key of the symphony as a whole, E major. And a sense of foreboding begins the work, naturally. And against the strings, that booming sound of Big Ben can be heard. And that leads into the main theme of the first movement in the key of E major. And in there, I hope we can all feel a sense of hope, but also a sense of pain and uh, a sense of majesty, um, a sense of, a deep sense of Britishness. And the choir then sing the, the opening words of the symphony, words by Wilfred Owen from the poem 1914. War broke and now the winter of the world with perishing great darkness closes in. And then I bring in the tenor soloist. There are two soloists in the Great War Symphony. The tenor, who represents the fighting man away from home, and uh, the soprano, who represents the, the wife, the mother, the sister at home. And the tenor sings some words by the poet laureate at the time, Robert Bridges. Um, I've actually got them, got them here. Thou careless awake, thou peacemaker fight, stand England for honour and God guard the right. He isn't a very well-known poet, actually, but it's a beautiful poem for the, for the soloist to sing. And then that kind of calling to arms is taken up by the choir in a poem by Edward Thomas, the great World War I poet, um, called The Trumpet. Again, not a particularly well-known poem, uh, but I love these words. Um, Open your eyes to the air that has washed the eyes of the stars through all the dewy night. Up with the light, to the old wars arise, arise. So I think we get the feeling of this um, task ahead of us and we will fulfil it with a, a strong spirit. I knew I wanted to include the famous World War I songs, marching songs, in this first movement. And they do really help to depict the movement from Britain to the continent. Um, I had thought about the choir singing them, but I think it's much better for these tunes to be in the orchestra and create this kind of medley almost. Um, is one of the tunes. You could also hear here maybe... Um, which is moving slowly in the bass pack up your troubles. And then a tune I knew I had to have. That's the tune my grandfather would sing to me when I was five or six years old. He survived the First World War, was a sergeant in the First World War, lost his hearing in the First World War because of the, um, the cannon fire. But he used to sing that song to me and so it's very important that uh, Mademoiselle from Armitiers is in there. I also then use another well-known melody, um, Onward Christian Soldiers, which I think is one of the most moving moments in the symphony. I was reading not long ago an account of um, 2,000 soldiers singing that famous hymn in France towards the start of the war. And I know it was a very, very important tune and set of words for many people who fought. And then obviously, towards the end of the movement, the reality of the war has to sink in. And I found some fantastic words um, by um, 
a poet called G.A. Studdart Kennedy. He was a, a chaplain and he was known as Woodbine Willie among the soldiers. And I, I thought this was great for the, uh, for the end of the first movement, a poem called Waste. Waste of muscle, waste of brain, waste of patience, waste of pain, waste of glory, waste of God, war. And as he sings war, the solo tenor hits a dissonant top B. And against that, towards the end of the first movement, I've got another lovely poem which contrasts beautifully with the kind of desolation of the poem Waste. It's by Julian Grenfell, and I love the last verse. The thundering line of battle stands, and in the air death moans and sings. But day shall clasp him with strong hands, and night shall fold him in soft wings. So this kind of soft melancholy, which was definitely being felt at home, is set against the soloist who's singing about the real desolation of war. The choir are singing, and night shall fold him in soft wings as the first movement draws to a close. And this movement ends with a sense of expectancy that something very much worse is still to come. <laughs>